our technical world is dominated by tiny computing devices that control peripherals with their software. Anyone who thinks that coding lessons can only happen with GHz processors, terabytes of memory modules and 21 inch monitors is totally wrong, because significantly more microcontrollers than personal computers rule our technology. I have already shown in many videos and chapters on Homo Faciens how peripheral devices have to be designed in order to be able to use digital signals from general purpose input output pins. More chapters will follow. To start teaching the software side of physical computing, I have now created the Mail to Code project. This gives you the opportunity to remotely program hardware that I have installed on my attic in order to gain a deeper understanding of microcontrollers. Here you can see a first hardware setup that I have connected to the internet. It is a Raspberry Pi with an Arduino Uno connected to a USB port. A few basic peripherals can be controlled via the Arduino's GPIOs. With this experimental setup you can learn to program the ATmega 328 microcontroller of the Arduino Uno. If you like my project, more microcontrollers will follow. LEDs serve as a classic entry point into the world of physical computing. The digital write function switches a pin to logical high or low level, which can be visualized most easily with an LED. Eight green LEDs are arranged in a row, which can be used to illustrate the binary system, port programming or bit manipulation for example. Seven red LEDs are arranged in the pattern of a dice, which will be used to teach pin assignment, arrays or random number generation amongst other things. Then there is a bipolar stepper motor that can be controlled via a driver board with step and directory signals. A magnet is glued to the motor shaft with which the rotation of the stepper motor can be detected via a corresponding sensor. This makes it possible to explain how to read analog input signals. A DC motor with two sensor discs is a little more complex to understand, it can be used to study closed loop systems. The two sensor discs are each scanned by three light sensors. The orange sensor disc is driven by a 20 to 1 reduction gear. You can easily count the revolutions of that disc. The green sensor disc is connected to the shaft of the DC motor and therefore rotates very quickly, which is why interrupt routines are required to record the input signals. I'll show details about these peripherals in upcoming videos and chapters on the series. With the mail to code system, the bar to entering the world of physical computing is lower than ever before. All you need to learn how to program hardware is a device that can send emails and display videos. This works with an ancient laptop, a decrepit tablet or almost any smartphone. A Bluetooth keyboard should be connected to the letter devices because programming means writing text, even if Hollywood sometimes fools you into believing that it would be enough to push colored symbols around the largest possible screens. In principle, a compact keyboard for programming on the go is sufficient... ...but a large version makes writing text much more comfortable.
If typing source code in an email program is too cumbersome, you can use any external editor and then either copy and paste the code or attach it to the email as a file. Once the source code has been entered, it can be sent to my mail to code server, which is running on a Raspberry Pi here. Everything else runs automatically. To show you what's running on the Raspberry Pi, I've logged in via a secure shell session so that the software's output can be seen on the laptop screen. First, the Raspberry Pi looks for available mails, which is done with fetch mail. Then, the received emails are processed with the help of a Python script. This script extracts the source code and passes it to the Arduino command line interface which uploads the resulting program to the Arduino Uno. Since it is an old Raspberry Pi Model B Plus from 2014, compiling takes a little longer than on newer models. This time span is shortened in the video. Simultaneously with the upload, the light bulb is switched on and the Raspberry Camera module starts recording what your code is doing. In this case, a red LED connected to GPIO number 3 starts blinking. I still have to prevent the simultaneous blinking of the green LED on one of the sensor discs with my soldering iron. Video recording stops after one minute. Then the video is converted with the help of FFmpeg... ...and the updated website is copied to my internet server. The result is now publicly available so that others can learn from your code experiments. The sender of the source code receives an email that the program has been processed. A version history is automatically integrated, all program versions are listed chronologically in the send mails folder. Thanks to forwarding, the teacher can also receive a copy of all emails and thus get an overview of who sent which program and when. By using mail to code an entire school class can access a single hardware setup. No classroom stuffed with computers and screens is required. Keyboards for smartphones are sufficient. Such a setup for a classroom is inexpensive and consumes less electrical energy than a single classic PC with monitor. If you can handle registers, GPIOs, arrays and data types on a microcontroller with kilobytes of storage space, you have no problem scaling it up to gigabytes. It's much more difficult the other way around. The I need a faster computer clowns have long forgotten how computing works at the bit level and are doomed to lead lives as terabyte chunkies. The mail to code software is still in an early stage, but it already works quite reliably. Try it out! You can access my system free of charge and without registration. However, the operation of the system is not free of charge for me. So if you want to support me in the maintenance of the hardware and pay me a little for my programming work, you will find the opportunity to donate an obel on my pages. Many thanks to everyone who has already made use of it. To give you an idea of what I use your coins for, I'm working on a mobile robot that you can control with the help of mail to code 
With rovers you can probably lure the kids away from the PlayStation better than just with blinking LEDs. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.